Hi, English Composition One writers and researchers and scholars. I wanted to do a short video on paraphrasing. Paraphrasing was a component of the sources assignment that you handed in on Monday. And I wanted to talk through in a little bit more detail about paraphrasing since it is a requirement of your illustration essay. You are asked to have at least two quotes. Those are, the, those are the direct exact words from a source. So you've copied and pasted somebody else's ideas or words and given them credit. And three paraphrased passages. Paraphrased passages, as you'll see on the screen that I have in front of us, are um, a summary of someone else's words or ideas. We still give them credit in an in-text citation. We still include that source in our Works Cited page, but we try to put the information that we are using in our own words to summarize it for the reader. And paraphrasing is often preferred by instructors and professors because it takes a little bit more critical thinking. It shows your audience and your professor that you have read the material, that you understand the material and that you can interpret the material in a way that is helpful for your reader. So when you're paraphrasing something, you are reading the passage first and then you are trying to uh, summarize it in your own words. What I usually do when I practice paraphrasing is I will read the passage a couple times that I want to use, put the passage away, and then try to write it out in my own words and then check my original passage and look at it again. If I'm staring at the original while I try to paraphrase, I'm going to be tempted to want to use the same words and sometimes the same word order, which are the two requirements of paraphrasing, that when you take a passage that you have um, put the put the idea, you've kept the idea, but you're rearranging the words and you're rearranging the word order. So. You also need to cite your source, and by citing your source, we mean we put an in in-text or parenthetical citation at the end of our paraphrase. Unlike quoting, which it requires quotation marks around the passage, paraphrasing doesn't, but it does require that in-text citation just like a quote does. So I have this example here of a, an original passage a legitimate paraphrase, an acceptable summary, and a plagiarized version. And if you compare the two, um, the plagiarized version, it simply contains too many of the same words, too much of the same word order as the original, and it doesn't give any credit to the original source. So it does take a little bit more practice and a little bit more doing to get paraphrases um, to a point where we're comfortable and that we don't feel like we're plagiarizing a passage. Paraphrasing is, while preferred by your instructors, it's also one of those areas where you're more likely to get in trouble with, with plagiarizing because unlike a quote where I copy paste, put quotation marks around it and cite my source, a paraphrase, if I don't do it correctly, I can be accused of plagiarizing as well. So it, it, there's more nuance there. It takes a little bit more practice. I want to show you a couple examples of paraphrasing and put this screen up real big. Um, this first example, I have a passage about Jacques Cousteau, who's a famous explorer. And um, if we read through it, we first want to say, okay, what, what is this passage about? The Antarctic is the vast source of cold in our planet, just as the sun is the source of our heat and it exerts tremendous control on our climate, Jacques Cousteau told the camera. The cold ocean water around Antarctica flows north to mix with warmer water from the tropics and its upwellings help to cool both the surface water and our atmosphere. Yet the fragility of this regulating system is now threatened by human activity. So we have this passage, we have direct words from Jacques Cousteau, and we want to try to interpret them for the reader without using the exact words of Jacques Cousteau. Um, so I want to show you, if I have it up here, I have lots of tabs open. I want to show you what an acceptable paraphrase might look like. So when you see these, you'll note that the paraphrase is often considerably shorter than the original passage, and that's okay. Um, this is veering somewhat into the territory of a summary, and a summary is just distilling it down even further. But paraphrasing is often shorter than the original passage. So the paraphrase for this would be introducing the quote, okay, French explorer Jacques Cousteau, that's who said it, warns that society's actions could endanger our planet's ability to control both air and water temperatures, which is essentially what this passage is saying. 
So we have distilled it down. We have given credit to Cousteau. We have in our in-text citation given credit to the article. For this particular example, there is no author affiliated with, with the piece. So we give credit to the article title. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, the 20s were the years when drinking was against the law and the law was a bad joke because everyone knew of a local bar where liquor could be had. They were the years when organized crime ruled the cities and the police seemed powerless to do anything against it. Classical music was forgotten while jazz spread throughout the land and men like Bix Beiderbeck, Louis Armstrong, and Count Basie became the heroes of the young. The flapper was born in the 20s and with her bobbed hair and short skirts, she symbolized perhaps more than anyone or anything else, America's break with the past. So we are taking a passage about the jazz age, essentially, the 1920s, the 1930s, uh, norms, social norms, cultural norms changed, and we had um, jazz music, we had prohibition, uh, even though there is prohibition, we had illegal stills around the uh, country. We have the flapper, you know, up until that time, women were wearing bigger skirts with um, not a garter, but whatever that thing is that we wear under our dresses to kind of tighten everything up. And styles change. Women, for the first time, probably in history, cut their hair short and they, they got rid of those constricting pieces of clothing and they wore very loose uh, dresses, but they pulled the hemlines up so that they were showing a little bit of leg, which was somewhat scandalous at the time. So our cultural and social norms changed. That's the essence of what this passage about is about. So here's a paraphrase of that. Uh, the 1920s ushered in a decade of rebellion in the U.S. with the emergence of speakeasies, speakeasies being those places where you knew you could get alcohol even though it was illegal, the prevalence of mobsters, and in the original it was referred to as organized crime, the expansion of jazz music, and the appearance of the spunky new woman, the flapper, who redefined femininity. So we've taken references to the major things that happened during that time, and we've distilled it down, paraphrased the passage for the reader. And a paraphrase is nice in that instead of having the reader read those, you know, whatever it is, eight, nine lines, you have taken that and, and smooshed it into four, but you've basically retained the essence of the original passage. And that helps the reader understand the context of it. So I have a better understanding without knowing all the extraneous details that um, these major things happened during the 1920s. And this was a big shift in, in how people behaved, what kind of music they listened to, how they entertained themselves. And the other thing to note is that we do have an author for this. We have Kathleen Yancey is the author. So we put her last name, no need for first name, her last name, but we also have a page number and we put the page number on which we found the passage. So Yancey 25, and again, the period goes on the outside there. Because this is a paraphrase, there's no need to put quotation marks, but we do need to give credit to Yancey. These were her ideas, this was her research, we need to give credit to her. All right, let's do one more. Of the more than 1,000 bicycling deaths each year, three-fourths are caused by head injuries. Half of those killed are school-aged children. One study concluded that wearing a bike helmet can reduce the risk of head injury by 85%. In an accident, a bike helmet absorbs the shock and cushions the head. So one thing about paraphrasing is when you have references to numbers, statistics, specific facts, you're often going to want to translate that in a slightly different way. So three-fourths can become 75%. 85% can become a large majority. Uh, the other thing to note with this is that we don't have an author again, so we would go with the title of our article, which would be Bike Helmets, and we do have a page number, 348. So our paraphrase would be something like this. Most bike-related deaths whose victims are often kids, so instead of referring to them as children, we'd call them kids, result from head trauma. Donning a helmet can significantly, significantly increase chances of survival. Um, oftentimes I see one of the biggest issues that um, veers, plagi uh, veers paraphrasing into plagiarism is not changing the verbs. And so if we scan through this original passage, we have caused, we have killed, we have reduce, and we have absorb and cushion. So if we are paraphrasing, we're going to try to find synonyms for those verbs so that we're not using the exact same words, the exact same verbs. So those are some tips on 
keeping track of making sure you're not plagiarizing your original passage. So that is a very short overview. When I teach this class in person, I often will do a couple of these with the class and then have you go and do a couple on your own and then go around and look at everybody's. Uh, so when you hand in the pie paragraphs that I'm asking you to do soon, I will be expecting you to do some things like this so I can give you some feedback on that. And uh, because it's a pie paragraph point illustration explanation, there should be in your illustration either a quote or a paraphrase. And remembering that paraphrasing is preferred and you are required to have three of those in your paper versus two uh, quotes. So that is a very quick overview of paraphrasing. It does take some practice, but it does uh, please your instructors because it does show a lot more critical thinking and understanding of the material that you're doing your research on. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have questions, as always, please let me know or uh, reach out to Brenda, who is our co-instructor for this class, and we'd be happy to help them or to direct you to someone who can help you. Thanks.